Okay, guys. So I have my coach and mentor on here, Tina Call. So Tina has been a realtor for over 20 years. She started at Remax and then Keller and was in, you know, Michigan. She moved her family from Michigan to North Carolina. Um, she used to be an agent like me selling, you know, 80, you know, 100 homes a year. Now she has a group in North Carolina, the call group, if you want to follow her. They did a thousand transactions last year. And or this year, this year, thousand this year we're tracking. So we're at seven, we're 745. <laughs> A lot of business with over 50 agents, lots and lots of fun business. She's even been on TED Talks if you want to peek at that, okay? So basically, I've been in business. I found Tina about a year and a half ago and been in business with her. And my whole thing is like, I've always been looking for additional coaching of somebody that I can mimic what they're doing to get their results. And even if I could have 10% of Tina's results, I'd be doing good. So in the last year and a half, Tina... You have helped me grow my business. We now have, we went from about four agents to nine, from 68 million to 100 million last year. But one of the biggest things is, you know, and you, you talk about, we're talking about wealth building today, and she's going to do this presentation for you guys. But the biggest thing for me is I started this business later in life. At 40 years old, I switched careers with no money in the bank and was scared. And for me, expediting and learning wealth building skills is really, really, really important for me. And you've changed my life, Tina, because in a year and a half of doing business with you last year, I increased my GCI by $400,000. So I already had had a good year. I added on $400,000 plus 40,000 in stock. And now that for me, now I have my first syndication, which is my first rental. You know, I'm doing another one. Now I have more options. And what Tina is going to talk about today, and Tina, one of the things you always say is, how many realtor retirement parties are we going to? None. <laughs> we don't retire, we die. That's what happens. It's sad, but it's true. <laughs> so let's be smarter about it. Let's figure out some things. And Tina, I've taken away two things for you. So she's going to talk about wealth building and leverage and 10 different ways that you can build wealth. I've only taken away two. I've been a slow learner. But my goal for you guys is if you guys can pick up one or two and shift things so, so you can you know be smarter and not like me at 40 having nothing in the bank. Now I'm expediting this. Now I'm, I'm listening to to Tina and um, Tina, I'm going to let you take it from here. So, um, well, thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. Um, you know, I, I told Kelly, she's such a giver and, and she just always is, you know, she, she's one of the people I have a thousand 68 agents in, in, you know, the nation in our network. And she's the one that constantly taps in, constantly calls. And, you know, a lot of you probably look up to her because she's got an amazing thriving business. She has amazing agents on her team and they do 40, 50, 60 homes a year up to 70. So they're really successful ladies. And um, what's interesting to me is every week we do a mastermind and we do this exact thing um, within our group. And there are um, in our complete mastermind, you would probably think that everybody would be on these calls to come learn. And the funniest thing is the most successful people are on the calls week after week after week. They are literally stopping their business to stop and learn a nugget and, and grow. And, and so if I look at my business for 21 years, the first seven years of my career, um, I was surrounded by agents in a, in a company and they sold 20 to 30 homes a year. And that's who I became. I sold 20 to 30 homes a year. And now it's like my group is bigger. They think bigger. And therefore I'm like, you know, I want progress every day. I mean, Tony Robbins says, if you're, if you don't have progress in your life, you're, you're going backwards and you just don't feel happy. So, so money and wealth, you know, Tony has talked to a ton of people that are multi multi-millionaires and billionaires. And he said, what's interesting is a lot of those people are still unhappy. So it's proven to him in his brain that money doesn't make you happy. You're either happy broke or you're happy rich. Your, your life can be happy with the things that you have. All of us on this call are so blessed, right? We all have a roof over our head, hopefully. We all have, you know, hopefully a little bit of money in the bank. We have a great career 
Could it be better? Yes. So for me, I came from a poor family and I money was like, oh, we didn't we fought about it. We didn't talk about it. Money was for the it was evil and the root of all evil. And so growing up, I had this thing about money and people with money. And then I met a group of people that changed my life. And I saw that they used money as a freedom tool. And that's what I'm looking for today is I don't ever want to have to work. I want to get to work. I get to do this every day. Um, I don't have to sell houses anymore. And it is so fun and just it, it just helps give you a different perspective and it helps us live because the one thing that we all have that's so precious that we don't have enough of is time. And um, I've met a lot of people and I'm, I'm looking at Austin on this call. Hi, Austin, um, young guy. And here he ended up in the hospital, you know, for how many, you know, I don't know, 30, 60, 90 days. And he didn't know why. So, so even a young guy like that, it's like Austin's mindset now is different. He's like, no, no, I got to figure out how to work and not be on the billable hour, not be, if it's to be, it's up to me. So, um, so I love that he got that perspective in his twenties and I'm in my forties and got that perspective at 38. So, um, so today I'm going to present to you guys, um, a leverage and leadership, um, class that I sort of give, um, to my agents. And, um, and my feeling with this is number one, we're going to talk about how to build wealth multiple different ways. So you guys can start thinking above and beyond just being an agent, you're an entrepreneur. Yes, but, but you can also build other businesses. And then the leverage piece is how do you guys and gals take what you're doing and leverage it faster? It took me, um, 15 years to finally step out of day-to-day -day sales. I was selling 130 homes a year. And now that I know the three leverage pillars, I think agents on this call, if you're doing 30 to 50 transactions a year, it's time for you to leverage. If you're a brand new agent on this call, good for you. It's time to you, for you to learn skills, get really good at building the foundation of your business. And then once that foundation is built, then you can think about getting to 30, 40, 50 deals and leveraging. So today is all about leverage and leadership. So Kelly gave you a little bit of my story again, 23 years in, uh, I was 23 years old when I entered this amazing industry um, that changed my life. I sold 25 to 30 homes a year for the first six years because I was the people I was surrounded by. They didn't think hugely, right? They were just doing what they thought was right in a small town up in Michigan. And um, and that's what we did. And I was a top producer. I was rookie of the year. And and that was great for me. I was making a hundred grand a year. But in 2006, the market started to crash and that hundred grand turned into 40,000 a year in. And I started not having fun. And I was like, man, if I'm making 40 grand a year, I'm getting out of the business because that's what that's why I dropped out of college because I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to be a social worker. I wanted to help people. But when I looked at what those people were making, unfortunately for me, $40,000 a year was where my parents were. And I knew that path and that path wasn't freedom. And I said, I'm not doing this. So I stayed the course and I met a, what I say, a magical fairy in 2008. I met a mentor that changed my life. And that mentor, same as me, grew up in a really poor family, he dropped out of high school and he built a hundred million dollar fortune. And then he turned around and helped others. He helped others learn the real estate business. So what he taught me was that I could wake up every single day and I wouldn't let the day happen to me like most real estate agents. You get in the office and you start doing emails and you start making phone calls back and you start servicing, but you're really not building your business. So what he taught me is when I get in every day, I have to A, generate new income every single day by talking to people that I don't know. That's called prospecting. That's called, you know, uh, digging and making appointments. Lead follow-up and prospecting are two different things because I would get in the office and do my prospecting. Then I would shift to lead follow-up and then I would go on appointments in the afternoon. The minute I did that and I followed this new system, all of a sudden I couldn't I couldn't believe the, the amount of business that was coming towards me. It was, it was amazing. He taught me about affirmations, which I felt really weird waking up every day and saying, I'm a great agent. I'm an amazing salesperson. I'm going to make money today. I mean, I felt like a crazy person. And my husband would look at me and he's like, have you lost your mind? I'm like, I don't care. This is what the successful people do. This is what I'm going to do. So they tell me to chant. I'm chanting whatever it is to be successful. So my income that first year hiring that coach a thousand dollars a month which i could not afford because we had five grand in the bank i put it on a credit card took my income from a, from forty thousand to one hundred fifty thousand in 12 months now remember this is 20 years ago one hundred fifty thousand is probably the equivalent of 250 today so i got my life back but then what my coach said is 
what do you want in your life? Like, is, are you happy with where you're at? And I'm like, you know what? I live in Michigan. It, it's cold. It's dreary six months out of the year. It's snowing. My fingers are freezing when I'm putting signs up in lock boxes. I want to live somewhere where the sunshine is out, you know, 24 seven. So she said, when, when do you want to go? And I said, I don't know, within a year. So we set this plan and within nine months, we moved to North Carolina and I was a brand new agent in that town, didn't know a soul, but I was armed with scripts and dialogue. And I knew that I could, you know, implement those skills and then build a business. So my first year in a new town, the first six months I sold one home. And Kevin came into my office. He's like, we're literally three months from like being broke and we have to go back to Michigan if you don't get this going. Cause he wasn't a realtor. He was my support, but he wasn't the realtor. And so that lit a fire under my butt. And the next six months I sold 33 homes. The next year it was 55. The next year was 84 and then 130 homes by my fourth year in a new town. And I did that for five years straight. And then all of a sudden, you know, getting to these 130 deals sounds amazing, but I suffered severe burnout. And like we were talking about the young gentleman, you know, um, earlier, I, I was like, how do, what if something happens to me? I kept thinking, what if I get sick? What if I get cancer? What if I get hit by a bus? What if I break my leg? What if I break my whatever? And I can't go on a listing appointment. I can't make money. My entire family, my entire business, is up to me if it's to be it's up to me and and that wasn't a business so i something had to change so let's go to a blast from the past <clears throat> when it was just me and i think a lot of you put it in the chat box if this is you you're doing all the jobs you're the listing coordinator you're the buyer closing coordinator you're the field worker you're the one putting up signs and lock boxes and changing the riders you're the isa meaning the inside sales associate that needs to do the prospecting every day you're the uh, person that sets up inspections. You're the marketing person for yourself. You're your own sales trainer. It's up to you. You have to go find sales training and then train yourself. So you're doing all the jobs. Now for me, I could do it, but could I do it efficiently? Not really. So things were falling apart. Every ball was in the air and I was just trying to like hold the balls up so they wouldn't fall. And I was making a lot of money. So I wasn't sad, but the reality was it wasn't, I was too afraid to grow. And so <clears throat> my feeling is I probably left millions of dollars on the table because nobody taught me about leverage. So when I tell my team now, I'm like, time is money. You have to think about, you know, if Kelly Brown makes a million dollars a year, which I know, you know, is probably in the GCI world for her, what kind of investment is Kelly now making to exchange her time for money and buy back some of that time and hire some leverage, hire some people to help her grow the team, hire some people to help her build courses, hire some people, the who. She knows the how. Now she has to find the who that's going to help her get to the next level because Kelly is maxed out at 100 homes a year. Taya is maxed out at 70, 80 homes a year. If people have families, Good luck seeing your children and your husband or your significant other. It just doesn't happen. So my old mantra, which my coach, I have to show you guys this. I'm going to grab it. It's so cute. My coach 12 years ago sent me this little card. Can you guys see it? It says, if it's to be, it's up to me. Okay. So that little card sat on my desk. And when I got into the office in the morning, I stood up. I had a stand-up desk. And I basically was like, okay, I have to make these calls. I have to call these people. I was a professional interrupter. That's what I had to remind myself. I am interrupting people, whether it's my sphere or an expired or a FISBO, I'm interrupting them to get what I want, which is the ability to go present and help them with their situation that they sometimes don't know they're in. So that was the old thing. I kept saying to myself, it's up to you, Tina. If it's to be, it's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to me. And I would chant that like 15, 20 times before I got on the phone because I had to psych myself out. Well, my, my life looks different now. And so if you look at my little card, I've crossed off the me and I've made it we. So what I did was after I did the grueling base camp, learning the skills, the dialogue, getting in the trenches, learning how to build appointments, build a business, then I said, my gosh, I'm the got a minute girl at my office. I, I think some of you put, put in the chat box, if you're the person at your office where people knock on your door or call you and they're like, hey, um, do you got a minute? Do you got a minute? Do you got it? Do you mind if I pick your brain? And you're like, sure, because you're a nice person. Of course, I'll help you. Absolutely. But people want this one magic answer that's going to change their life. 
I don't have the solution in five minutes. Like my, my research and development to get to where I was, was endless amounts of coaching and training and flying to events and taking time for research and development. So I could implement 20% of what I've learned every single time I come back. So my mindset was now I can monetize my brain. I can help other people, these amazing humans on my team, help them build lives, help them build real estate careers. So now I have that mantra that if it's up to, to be, it's up to we. So leverage is everything. Um, so most of us get into the real estate business to become entrepreneurs, right? A lot of you came from different businesses. You're like, I don't want to work for the man. I'm not going to be on a billable hour. I don't want to work for anybody. I'm an entrepreneur. But what does that mean? So entrepreneur is a person who organizes and operates a business or businesses taking on greater than normal financial risks in order to do so. Meaning all of you on this call, number one, give yourselves a round of applause because you guys are the risk takers. We are the ones that make America great. We're the ones that are like, no, I'm going to build that business. I'm going to run that company. I'm going to help these people. We are in sales. Sales is the lifeblood of everything. Sales, everything on your desk right now, look around your room, everything you touch, has been sold to you, everything. So everything you do in life, you're selling yourself to another human being, everything. So I tell my son a lot of times, I'm like sales and, and money and, and, and you know having income, it's like the lifeblood of the business. Blood and money are the same. They're both kept in a bank, right? A blood bank and a bank. They both have to circulate, right? So we need money to survive. Sales are everything. So I believe that real estate agents have three leverage pillars. They, they have to master. Number one is systems. And I know a lot of you are good at systems. And by systems, I mean, hey, when we get a listing, what's the system for putting the listing in the MLS? What's the system for getting the, the listing sold? What's the system for following up with the seller? All of those things that you guys have created are systems. And if you don't have a system, start writing out your system, your SOP, right? Your, your systems and processes. And, and the next thing I think we're really good at is tech. I mean, all of you are from probably five or six different states and look at us, we're having a meeting. We have 80 people on today and I don't have to get on a plane to fly to Kelly's town to come meet you all and say hi, like I'm leveraging tech, I'm leveraging Zoom. And so we all are really good at apps and different things that CRMs that help us build our business. I laugh, but I'm going to show you guys this. This is my magical box. This little magical box is what I grew a million dollar business on. So I hate CRMs. My brain doesn't work that way. Can I get an amen in the chat box if you're like me? I built my business this way. So all I did, which I'm going to give you guys a little trick, is I would keep my little file on my client. I would stick, if I talk to somebody today and I said, okay, it's September, I'm going to talk to them in December. So I stick it in December. And then in December, I had 15 or 20 little note cards to follow up with. This for eight years made me a million dollars a year. Like, I know it's silly, but that's how you got to just do something that's consistent. So, um, so tech is huge though. If you're like me, you're going to use the little box, but if you're not like me, use your CRM. But the third thing that is the pillar that I think is the weakest in our business is people. We don't have people leverage because 80% of agents don't know how to do the most important one. And I think sometimes it comes down to the risk. Well, I don't want to hire someone because then they're dependent on me and, and that puts accountability on me. And if, if I can't sell a home next month because my business looks like this, then I can't pay Sally her salary. So Sally's going to leave. And I think all of us go through that period where we're like, I, I don't want to be in charge of someone's livelihood, but I can promise you that having leverage is huge having that accountability puts a fire in your tushy and it gets you out and it helps you be accountable to sally so you can show up every day and pick up that dreaded phone and make that phone call and build your business but what i'm going to show you guys right now is the secret sauce um i'm going to take a drink real quick <laughs> leave you with a cliffhanger what is the secret sauce so the secret sauce right now for all of you that are within that 30 to 40, 50 deal range, the secret sauce is getting the right people on the bus at the right time. Because as you guys are building your business, you're not gonna be able to do it all. So if you're that agent that's 30, 40, 50 deals and you're making three, four, $500,000 a year, who is the first major hire? 
if you read a lot of the business books and you read a lot of, um, you know, I was with KW, they have a red book. The red book will talk about, you have to hire an assistant. And I did that at first. My assistant ended up scaling with me to the point where I was paying her a hundred grand a year because I made a huge mistake. I paid her an override on every little transaction. And guess what that, what happens? It doesn't scale. I didn't know, made a big mistake. Now she was worth her weight in gold, but if I would have done it better looking back now that I've made the mistakes, um, now the mistake would have been um, to hire an assistant first, a salaried employee. I think that's wrong. The first person that you guys are gonna think about hiring is not an assistant because if you're selling 30, 40, 50 homes a year, let's say you're selling 50, 395, $400 a transaction, you can hire a transaction coordinator that is not on your salary. You pay them when the transaction comes in. 50 deals, that's $19,000. A good assistant's gonna cost you 50. So for the cost of one good assistant, you could get, you know, you could get a hundred deals with a transaction coordinator. My feeling is if I did it all over again, I would hire an ISA who is a growth partner. Meaning, I want everybody right now in the chat box, let's be honest. Tell me that, tell me who, say yes, if you prospect two to three hours a day doing your contacts five days a week. Be honest, if there, let me see if there's any yeses. Kelly, tell me if there's any yeses in the chat box. I can't see. Can you see? Tell me if we have any. I have no's. I have no's. <laughs> no's, no's, no's. So, I mean, the reality is, I know you guys would be lying if you said you did it every day. I didn't even do it every day. And I built a million dollar business selling 130 homes. And I did it maybe three days a week because by the time you get so busy, Kelly Brown doesn't have to be prospecting every day. She's... She's got people coming to her now, but here's the thing. Kelly's missing out on millions and millions of dollars because she doesn't have an ISA in place that could be going and getting her more appointments that could be servicing more agents on her team and building their livelihoods. Now that's her decision. She's not crazy town like me. I'm like, I'm gonna go help more people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this thing. She doesn't wanna do that. She's building a virtual team, which is smart. But imagine you guys hire a growth partner, $2,000 a month, a 5% override. That growth partner is prospecting for you six hours a day, calling expireds, calling for sale by owners, calling your sphere, calling your top five neighborhoods, calling around open houses when you have open houses. Do you think your business would go up? Put yes in the chat box. If you think that you would get a more sustainable business, if you had a growth partner every single day sitting in a seat getting you appointments, are they saying yes, Kelly? I can't see them. Yes. Saying yes. Okay. You can keep yourself unmuted. <laughs> Cause I'm going to ask you questions. Um, so, so that's the things guys and gals, like if you're not sitting there making those calls, which I don't, I don't think you should every day, to be honest, I was, I was the ISA. I could have hired that role out. So all of a sudden looking back at my life, I'm like, my God, I was paying myself way less than my worth. I should have been out building bigger relationships, making it rain on my team and growing my business versus sitting there being an ISA that I could have paid $2,000 a month for. Now, remember, if that ISA makes you one appointment and you land a listing and you make 10 grand or five grand or 20 grand wherever you live, I mean, Dave Calhoun, he lives in San Diego. His average is probably 20 grand, 20 grand or 10 grand, one deal a month that pays the ISA salary for the next six months. Now you have a growth partner for the next six months in-house helping you build your business. But don't think of the ISA as an easy way out. If you're sitting here going, oh, okay, well, I don't like to prospect, so I'm gonna hire an ISA. But you have never built the foundation to know your skills, your sales language. How do you get a seller now to reduce their price? Because they're like, well, we just need to wait for one buyer. And you know the market's shifting. If you don't have those sales skills, you have no business hiring an ISA and, and teaching them because you haven't taught yourself. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not a, oh, let me cut a corner. This is for the people already 30, 40, 50 deals and they need leverage. This is the next step for that, that agent. I am talking to those agents, not new agents. New agents, they need to coach themselves up first. So eventually what will happen is you guys will have too many appointments to service. You get the ISA, you have the transaction coordinator. Now you have too many appointments. Well, guess what? This is the time that we need to grow our team. This is the time where we need to bring partner agents and say, hey, partner agent, I have clients. I can't service them. I have too many appointments. 
I need you to come in and service my clients. And when those clients close, you're gonna take 50% of it and I'm gonna take 50% of it because I've created these clients for you and you're gonna service them. You don't have to go through the pain of building a business. I'm just gonna hand you clients. So now you can finally start building a business that doesn't involve around you being the main earner of the business. And once you help others create their business, you're gonna see that more and more people will come to your team. Now that's if you want a physical team, there's other ways around it. You know, there's virtual teams and other things we'll talk about. But right now, if you want to build a team, you got to learn your skills, get to 30 to 50 deals a year, then start scaling with a growth partner, have opportunity, then you bring on agents. Most agents, you know, when they think about building a team, what they do wrong is like Kelly Brown, you're going to build a team of 10 more agents. If I asked you, Kelly Brown, right now, um, can you go open a coffee shop and you know, get all the stuff for it, manage it, hire the people. Do you have time to open a coffee shop? No. Okay. Then you don't have time to build a team. She doesn't have time to teach the agents, train the agents, watch the agents, answer their questions while selling 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 homes over here. So what happens is team leaders or agents that build teams, they start to bring all these agents on because they're like, I have pain. I need these agents to just come take away my pain. And these agents come and they're like, teach me your ways, wise one. And you're like, well, I don't have time. I got to go service my people. And so what Kelly would need to do is hire a manager, hire a team leader, spend the money to hire somebody to help the agents, somebody to teach the agents and rah, rah the agents while she builds her business big enough to have enough agents to then step out so Kelly can be at the top and be the visionary for her team, finally be the investor of her team where she's not the highest earning individual on her team. So I'm picking on her because I can. Um, so why do most people fail at running teams? They're part-time leaders. So I don't want you guys to be a part-time leader and start thinking that bringing agents onto your team is gonna cure your woes. It won't. It'll actually help you fail faster, help you be non-profitable and help you turn your eye and nose up to, I don't want a team, it's just a lot of work. Yeah, it's building a business, a secondary business. But what's beautiful is I went away for a month to Greece, then to Michigan. I travel all around the country now. And the month that I was gone, my team sold 80 homes. I came back to 80 homes sold. I didn't sell one of those and I had freedom. My phone did not ring on vacation one time. I finally had freedom because I know all of you that go on vacation, you know you've been there. You're playing Monopoly with your kids or your family and then that dreaded call comes in. You're like, oh my God, hey, we have an offer. You got a deadline. We're gonna give you a deadline. And you're like, okay, hold on kids. I have to go negotiate this offer. I'll be back in 20 minutes, just wait for me. 20 minutes turns into two hours. And by the time you go back to your family, guess what? They're off to something different. And you missed all those moments in their life that you will never get back. And this makes me very emotional because there were many of those moments that I gave up for money and I gave up for security for my family. And I didn't know that I could grow faster and get my life back. So today, um, our team looks a little different. You know, we are 62 agents strong. Our, our agents are growing daily. I have systems and processes in place. I want to get to 100 agents in the next year, year and a half, because now we can service these people. Um, Kelly is part of our Freedom Builders National Network. Um, you know, I'm going to close 1,000 homes on my team there, but I also have another thousand agents in our network at our firm. And that's the other piece of leverage I'm going to show you guys next is I went from one stream of income three years ago to 10 streams of income today in three years and 36 months because I was in rooms with people having these conversations. How are you gonna grow? How are you gonna sustain this? One of the leaders at my company said to me, Tina Call, you need to sell less homes. This was the first six months I was at the company and I'm like, sell less homes? This is my life's work. Like, are you nuts? Like, no, I, I just, it took me 17 years to get here. I'm not gonna sell less homes. I didn't get it. I didn't understand how I could sell less homes. I didn't understand how I could replace myself and, and feel comfortable and confident that I wouldn't be broke. So, um, so now we have a big network, which um, I'm gonna talk about. So the one thing I wanna leave you guys with is we work hard. We work hard for our money. We are 24 seven. We are like doctors on call. We, you know, a doctor is in the same position we are. They have to use their hands and their brain and they're the only ones that can do it but not us. Like we think that people are hiring us because we're so special. 
oh, nobody can do it like me. Nobody can close this deal like me. I'm Tina Call. They want me. Guess what? They don't want you. They want good service. They want great, great um, agents teaching them, um, you know, what they need to do to navigate the market. Once I started to delegate things off my plate, oh my God, my whole world came back to me. And so if you think that, you know, these customers are hiring you, you're right. But if you think that they will only hire you for the rest of your life, you're wrong. Because when my customers now call me back, I say, hey, you know what? I have this amazing agent, Kelly Brown. She is my partner. I'm here at, at the base and I do all of these other things today, but she is out in the field and I'm going to send her to your house. And they're like, Tina, we trust you. If we trusted you then, we trust your judgment now. So you can do this. Um, so the key I want to leave you guys with is if you don't have a growth partner at, at 30 to 50 deals, you're leaving money on the table. You've got to scale yourself and you have to be growing your business every single day, not once a week. And most of us spend 80% of our time servicing, 20% of our time building, and it needs to be flip-flopped. So you, you got to put the proper leaders in place if you want to scale and grow a team and you don't want to be stuck having one stream of income. So most millionaires know that they have to have seven or more vehicles of income to become wealthy, right? Not one vehicle. Um, Tony Robbins' son runs our, our success magazine at our company. And I've had the pleasure of like literally sitting elbows to elbows with them. And, you know, he said, my dad has 110 companies. What my dad taught me was stop worrying about your bank account, Jarek. Stop worrying about your business, Jarek. Start help, helping other people worry about their businesses, Jarek, and then take a sliver of that business and you will become wealthy. And I was like, light bulb. That's exactly what I do. Kelly and I are business partners. My company pays me to coach Kelly. And if she gets better, we win. It's a win-win. So the the millionaires and the wealthy people they know their net worth they know how to manage their money and nobody teaches us this so that's my goal um you know we've got several masterminds about wealth building um and these people have plans to grow so the next slide before i show it to you guys is the last slide that i have and then we can open it up to questions comments concerns um the next slide is to empower you guys not to show off the next slide i almost didn't want to show um, but you know, I was encouraged by, by Kelly and she said, no, I, these people are growth minded. They want to grow. They show up every week. You know, we help each other. This is to show you that I was just a broke little Greek Italian girl. I had C's and D's in high school. I never wanted to speak on stage because I spelled pyramid wrong when I was eight years old and in a spelling bee and people laughed at me and I never went on stage until I was 40 years old. I had to get over that and um, ended up doing a TED talk, which is crazy, but I got over those fears. So I push myself now, if I am afraid of something, I'm like, I'm gonna do it. So this next slide is to show you the 10 different streams of income. I'm gonna do a disclaimer. The results are different for everyone. I'm not a financial advisor. I, in fact, I don't know a lot about all the stocks and the stuff, but I do know that consistency over time wins. Most of you overestimate what you can accomplish in a year. And this is agents will come to me like, I'm gonna sell 70 homes my first year. Okay, let's have a plan for that. Um, you overestimate what you can accomplish in a year, but you underestimate and undervalue and, and, uh, and don't plan on what you can perform in 10. So this is my 10 year journey, but most of these streams of income happened in the last three. In fact, nine of them happened in the last three. So I'm gonna go through these and explain them to you um, because I hope that it makes you think bigger. So last year, our team sold um, 514 homes with 25 agents. My net was 1.2 million, meaning I took that home after all expenses. So when you think about that, when it was just me and I was selling 130 homes a year, I took home about 800,000 a year. So when I think about it, I'm doing all the work in the field, very sustainable or a very um, exposed to something happening to me. And that entire uh, business that I built going away overnight because I get sick or whatever to now, if something happens to me and hopefully it doesn't, my family at least has a business I built that I'm proud of. I built a legacy. Call Group will be around forever. We have a three-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. I am production focused first and Call Group is my baby. So, so that is better than me doing all the work. My revenue share for helping um, people at my company grow. So um, I brought on one agent a month 
Um, that's it in the last three years, and that has grown to over 1,060 people. Um, I was the biggest hater of my company, uh, known to man probably on the planet, and nobody was going to recruit me. And finally, um, a really amazing friend just caught me at a weak moment, I, caught me at an open mind moment, and I opened my mind, and what I saw, I couldn't unsee. And so I thought, you know what? I love helping people. I'm the got a minute girl. Um, I helped Keller Williams grow. I was recruiting agent after agent there, and I didn't get much out of it. Here, that my company has paid me a million one. Actually, I just got paid another check, but a million one hundred thousand in the last three years. That is my freedom money. That's going to continue to grow and compound every six percent every single month for the for the next ten years as we grow. So, so if you are thinking about coaching training, that's that's something. If you're if you have the the heart of a coach then that's something you you need to look into um the next thing is the stocks you know of course in my accounts if you're not saving 10 to 15 percent of your income i did this 10 years ago my um uh accountant said you should just put it in a sep account a uh, roth ira something you know american funds just take 10 to 15 percent tina you're not gonna you're not gonna miss it it has compounded 8% every year. That is my average return. And all of a sudden I woke up 10 years later and there's 700 grand in that account just by shaving off 10 to 15% yearly. So if you're not doing it, think of your age today, think of your age in 10 years. If in 10 years you could have $700,000 built up, that's something to, to strive for. So save money, pay yourselves first. Um, at my company, I obviously get gifts for earning, um, just selling homes 27 deals a year earns me all of my rev or all of my um my cap back so my company's paid me four hundred thousand dollars in stocks i've already used two hundred thousand i went and bought two rental properties so i love getting rewarded for me having ownership in the company um i bought 11 homes in the last three years with my rev share and with my stocks and those 11 homes have turned into five million dollars of net worth but here's the crazy part I spent $500,000 to buy 11 homes, right? I have mortgages on them. That's a long-term hold plan. So in 20 years, I'm gonna be so excited to have 11 homes that are paid for. And those 11 homes, if let's say it's $2,000 a month in, in you know um, monthly revenue, that's gonna feed my family. That's gonna fund my retirement. It's a great long-term plan, plan. But those 11 homes, make me $3,000 a month in passive income. So I spent $500,000 to make 3,000 in passive. That's crazy. If I look at my revenue share, I bring one agent a month to the company and they pay me 70 grand a month. Like that's almost stealing, but it's exciting. So I want you guys to think about that because I know Kelly and I are on a mission to grow um, our, our network and to bring in people that are forward thinking, progress thinking, they want to help others, they have a heart of a teacher, that is our goal. So we want all of us to be, you know, building these wealth streams. Um, I have two Airbnbs, those Airbnbs, my payment on them is 1300 a month, I make $2,500 a month net from both of those. So those are fantastic returns. Kelly was talking about syndication deals. Um, one of our senior partners at our company he uh had 400 rental properties sold them all took 10 million dollars and went and invested it in syndications now is worth 40 million dollars so he taught us about group investment funds so i make four thousand dollars a month clear on those they're not headaches they're wonderful the check comes in the mail my husband's thrilled about it even though he told me not to do it now he's happy um and those are great um affiliate agreements i learned this from one of my partners um here at our company he said, Tina, anything you touch turns to gold. Have that mentality. You keep saying, get Red X, get, um, get Espresso Agent, sign up for Sales X Coaching, which is a friend of mine uh, that's a coach. Um, and I keep promoting all these things and then people buy them. And so now I just call all the companies and the vendors and I'm like, hey, can I get affiliate links? When I mention this product, in my YouTube channel, which brings in another 20 grand a month, if I mention this product, would you pay me? And they're like, yeah, please mention it all day long. So now I bring in another $1,500 a month just from passive income streams of affiliate agreements. Um, I get, I, I really work my referrals. So if you guys have a referral coming to Raleigh, North Carolina, 
We've got a great team for you. It's called Call Group. Um, we'd love your referrals. So my agents love getting referrals from our company, um, which is great. So you got to work those. And then the next two things that are coming is, you know, we have um, we're going to possibly do coaching, right? So ten coaching clients at two thousand dollars per month. That's another twenty grand a month. If I wanted to do that, if I felt I had the time, I don't really have a, a goal of doing it but it's something on our thinking big list. And then, you know, we are thinking about building courses, you know, Kelly and I, she could do an amazing social media course. You know, you think about um, all the things you guys can take out of your brain and put on paper and you sell a hundred people a course for 350 bucks. You do that monthly and there's 35 grand a month in revenue. Like think about your life as how do I get out of this? You're right now we're all on a hamster wheel at, at selling homes, being a loan officer, all of us in sales, we're on this hamster wheel. If you're not running, the money is not coming out. You got to think about if something happened to me and I can't run where, how do I support my family? Because you need right now about $900,000 in the bank. If you're, let's say I'm 44 years old, if something happened and I didn't have money and I had, let's say $900,000 to my, my whole world, my net worth, and I couldn't work again, that $900,000, my tax person's going to say, don't take out more than 4%, which is $3,000 a month to last you into your eighties. So if you get hurt and you want three grand a month in, in, in passive revenue, you already need a million dollars in the bank. I need 15 grand a month to just get by. That means I need four and a half million dollars of, of net worth in the bank that I can withdraw from to live through my 80s. So be very serious about your income streams. Be very serious in the fact that in 14 years, what you make today, you're gonna have to double to live the same life with inflation. So I hope this is helpful. I hope it ignited something in you guys and gals to think about like all the different things that you can do to build your streams because do not settle for one and make sure you're not the one that is the only producer in your business. So that's all I got, Kelly. I love that. <laughs> and I just want to say, sometimes I look at you and I'm like, oh my gosh, she is like so far ahead of the game. And sometimes I feel overwhelmed. And what I just want to say is just listening to you though, over a year and a half, I've been able to do two different income streams and a syndication, and it really has changed my world. So if anyone's on here and you're like, oh my gosh, she's so far ahead, just making little changes can make a big, 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 big difference. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, if you guys like this and you want to talk about, I'm doing trainings. I'm going to keep pouring into trainings, um, very social media focused. Um, so keep, I'll do a lot of public, but I'm doing a lot of private stuff too for our partners. So if you guys like this kind of stuff and you want to talk about partnering and what that looks like, let me know. Let's grab coffee. That's what I did with Tina a while ago. I like found her on Instagram and I'm like, oh my gosh, you got to me. Part <laughs> I stopped you on Instagram, but I'm like, you mean I can partner with her and she's going to actually help me grow. I mean, Tina, I text you probably less now, but I used to text you almost every day. And yeah. I have somebody coaching me, getting back to me. I've never had that at another company. You ask somebody, you know, at my other brokerages, Hey, what's your listing plan? Hey, what are you doing for this? No one's really sharing. And so that's what we're doing here. Yeah. And I, I, I just have to leave them with this. Like, you know, your, your brand, your whatever company where we are all agents just trying to get by, right? The market's shifting. We're trying to get by. We're not in gangs, guys. Like our brokerages make us feel like we're in gangs and our brokerage is better than your brokerage. It's a bunch of hullabaloo. The reality is we're all independent contractors. We are agents. We are the brand. Start branding yourself. Call group is my everything. Everything I touch turns to call group. That is my brand. My company empowers my brand and it and it helps me build these vehicles but that's it so so if you're at a company right now and you're using their remax.com for your email don't do that i don't use exp.com i didn't use keller williams i don't use remax i use callgroup.com make sure you guys spend so much time on your brand who are you and and really start building that out and then start really writing down all the knowledge that you have brand new agents that i have start doing YouTube pages and they are killing it. And what are they doing? They're just showing people the struggle. They're showing people how their their day-to-day their -day looks. 
and they're getting so many followers. Your job is to build an audience. And then how do you leverage that audience? We are marketers. We are in a marketing business. Sellers and buyers are hiring us to market their property, but we don't act like it sometimes. So think about yourself as a marketer. And then how do you, you know, help a buyer and seller? You are, you are recruiting those buyers and sellers to come work for you. Now you can think about, you know, that you can partner with other people. David Calhoun is one of my partners um, in our network and um, he's awesome. He bugs me all the time too. And we have great conversations and I love building these networks with people. So it's sort of like us against the industry. Like how do we as agents connect, combine our efforts, combine our, our, our um, you know, mental knowledge and then start to scale that. And so, um, so Kelly and I, she, she dragged me here today because she's like, I want people to meet you. It's been a year and a half. And um, I just said, I'd love to meet them all. So if you guys, you know, think about a partnership and you want to think about like how it would be to partner with us and then bring people that you love into this, it's life changing. So I do have to go because I have an 11 o'clock meeting for call group. Um, but I'm so thankful for you all. If you have questions, reach out to Kelly. If you want to do a coaching call with Kelly and I, reach out to Kelly and she'll get you scheduled. We can do a business blueprint for you and start to look at your whole life and then and then really start to um, put a plan in place to scale it. So I love you all. Thank you for listening. And um, you, Tina, everyone stay, was on good. For, everyone stay on for a quick second. Thank you, Tina. So appreciate touch base with you later. Yep. Bye y'all. Thank you. The one thing I wanted to say is I love what she said about branding. And this is something I'm going to do another training on this because you're your brand, not your brokerage. I couldn't believe this more, no matter what brokerage I am at. EXP is not my brand. Kelly Brown Homes is my brand. I can go anywhere. I ever want a brokerage change. I can go anywhere. I can take my blue and I can go somewhere else. I'm the brand. And some of you guys, what I realized when I started doing more and more and more business is I was paying my brokerage way too much money, way too much money. So if you are somebody paying your brokerage 30, 40, $50,000 a year, some of you guys are paying over six figures a year. The crazy thing is and what I'm doing now is I've earned all it back. I pay nothing to my brokerage with the volume that I do. I get it all back in stock, all back in stock. So in a year and a half, I have $80,000 in stock. It's crazy. So it's a whole different. So something to think about some of the things, you know, if you are at a brokerage that is giving you a ton and you're, you're getting, you know, desk space and marketing and an assistant, you know, maybe that's worth it to you. But if you are spending a lot of dollars and you're not marketing yourself, you might want to consider that. So anyways, I appreciate everyone being on here. I'm going to continue 9 a.m. Realtor Collab every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Realtor Collab. Anyone, any brokerage, we are doing that Central Standard Time. Feel free to pop on. 9.30 will be trainings. Some of that will be open to the public. I'm starting to password protect that for our partners. I am going to be double downing on social media, guys. It's a harder market right now. And they are saying 20 to 30% of realtors are getting out of the business because it will be harder. So is that you? What are you going to double down on? Social media has become my thing. That's how I grew my business. I'm going to be doing more and more and more training on that. If you're interested in growing your business with social media, join us. So thank you everyone for being on here. We'll see you at the next one.